session is the Pocahontas State Park annual update. Mr. Clark. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Casey. Appreciate you all having me up here and appreciate the opportunity to come and give an annual update for Pocahontas State Park. Uh, my name is Nate Clark. I'm the park manager. And um, again, thank you for having me here today. Um, got a couple slides with some general park information and then go through some updates, uh, some stuff that's happening this year, some, some new facilities and some new openings that we have um, after being, uh, you know, going through COVID for the last few years in the pandemic. Um, but we are, of course, a division of the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation. Uh, Virginia State Parks is the largest division for DCR, and we currently have about 41. It is 41 state parks across the state. Um, some general info on the park. Uh, Pocahontas is the largest park in Virginia at uh, just under 8,000 acres. And as you all know, we stretch from Courthouse Road all the way down to Woodpecker. It's, uh, it's a good chunk of land in there. Um, so the largest park in the state. In 2021, this is calendar year 2021, our attendance was about 950,000, just over 950,000. Um, and that includes some facility closures. The pool and the aquatic complex being the biggest, of course, has been closed for two years until this summer. Um, 951,000 was the second highest in the state for Virginia State Parks. And that also included about 120,000 overnight guests. So those are folks who were camping and staying in, the, uh, in our new cabins. Um, so again, a busy park, uh, a lot of folks come out and, and enjoy Pocahontas. Um, interpretive programs last year, um, these numbers are also a little bit down because of course we had to modify a lot of the ways that we did things over the last few years, but our interpretive educational programs are, uh, are, are very important for what we do. This is the, the junior ranger programs and the getting the kids down in the creeks and turning over rocks and finding crawl dads and teaching the stewardship and the values and the conservation and resource values that, that we want to pass on to, uh, to the youth that come to the park. So over 600 programs last year, um, and again, even 600 is a little bit down. So we're, we're trying to get those numbers back up to where we'd like to see them. Um, 30,000 volunteer hours. We have just a tremendous, just incredibly tremendous volunteer and community support here in Chesterfield. The folks that, that come to the park, that use the park. Um, Friends of Pocahontas is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that just does tremendous things for the park. Um, they provide financial support, they help with programs, they staff our special events, they do fundraisers, just do incredible things for the park. Uh, Virginia Master Naturalists, um, RVA Moore, uh, Paralyzed Vets of America, just the list goes on of all the folks who, who contribute to these volunteer hours. So truly, we could not do the things that we do and offer the park that we have without our volunteers, so we're very thankful for them. Um, and then Pocahontas was established in 1946, and we just had our 75th anniversary last year. Mr. Holland came out for one of our concerts and, and spoke to the crowd on behalf of the, the Board of Supervisors. We appreciate that. Hope to see you out again this year. <laughs> um, some budget and revenue numbers. Um, just go through these real quick. Our, our fiscal year, of course, is July 1 to June 30, so we're about to end the, uh, the current fiscal year. Um, our operating budget is $1.2 million. Um, this does not include our FTE salaries and benefits, um, also does not include capital projects and other agency funded projects. So the 1.2 is, um, is our wage um, staff budget throughout the year, operating services, other than personnel services, contract services, all, all, those, uh, all those basic expenditures. Um, and our revenue for last year, FY21, was $1.5 million. Um, and as you can see in FY22, we're already up to $1.9 million. So, We've definitely seen some increases, and I think a lot of parks, and um, I'm sure you, get, you all have seen this and witnessed this with, with Chesterfield County Parks also, we've seen a tremendous increase in attendance and visitation over the last few years. People realizing how important it is to be able to get outside and enjoy nature and enjoy these recreational opportunities that we have. Um, and our attendance and our revenue has, has reflected that. Um, this year, obviously, we've opened a pool again, uh, opened Memorial Day weekend after being closed for two years. So that certainly is contributing to that revenue increase. Um, we've also had our cabins open for just under a year. I think it was July 4th week last year is when we opened our cabins. Um, and the campground has just been busy. We've been full every weekend going back to March. So we're, we're seeing a lot, of, a lot of good usage of the park, um, which has a direct impact, of course, on our revenue numbers. Um, staffing, we'll uh, hit this real quick. We have 11 full-time positions um, is what our allocation is for the park. 
So 8,000 acres, almost a million people, and we've got 11 allocated FTE positions. Um, we have one that is vacant right now. In the summertime, of course, we need a lot more help, so we hire a lot of folks in the summertime, a lot of our seasonal wage employees, um, high school kids, college kids, you know, folks who are looking for the summer job. So that's groundskeeping, maintenance, working in the office, the contact station, um, doing the interpreter programs, the educational programs. So our total staff could vary quite a bit, but during the summer, it's, it's, it's not uncommon to get up to about 75 people in the park. Um, one new initiative that we did this year was with our, our lifeguards in the pool. Um, being closed for two years. Typically, we really rely on our seasonal staff returning year after year, especially lifeguards, if they have that certification, they're familiar with the operation, familiar with the park. Having the pool closed for two years, we didn't have that. And as I'm sure we all know, there's been a labor shortage. Seemingly, it's getting more and more difficult to find, find folks to work. Um, so we did a, a public bid solicitation for a lifeguard management company this year, and we we're able to contract with Swim Club Management Club or Swim Club Management Group. I'm sorry, um, to provide our lifeguard services for us this year, um, which has worked out very well so far. Um, we we would have had a hard time opening on on our own, hiring our own lifeguards. So that's been a big bonus and a big plus. Um, and then to finish up the staffing on our law enforcement side, we have uh, five positions. Um, currently, one is vacant, and one is finishing their training and um, his academy training and his field training. So hopefully get him up to speed towards the end of the summer. Uh, park facilities, again, I'll kind of hit on this quickly. Um, campground is about 120 sites. The new cabins that we opened last year, we have four, four three-bedroom cabins and one six-bedroom lodge. Um, very nice cabins and uh, getting some good usage there. Uh, pool and an aquatic complex, um, of course, we did open that this year. The amphitheater or summer concert series is going. Uh, visitor center, museum, um, dining halls, picnic shelters. There's, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of stuff going on in, in the park, a lot to keep up with. And economic impact. Um, every year, Virginia State Parks partners with uh, Virginia Tech University and um, Dr. Vince Magnini with uh, Pamplin School of Business. And Dr. Magnini is very well known in the uh, in hospitality industry and in this field. And he produces our economic impact report for the state every year. Um, a lot of his numbers are based on attendance. That's why you see a little bit of a fluctuation there over the last three years. So as attendance goes up this year, I would expect to see that number increase a little bit also. Um, and he, he bases it on daily attendance, overnight attendance. This also takes into account the money that um, out of the park operating budget that we put back into local businesses by buying supplies um, and all that. So last year in 2021, this again is calendar year, uh, was a reported $37 million impact to the local community. So every state park across the state, rural communities to bigger urban communities like Chesterfield, see a direct impact to the community by having a, a park and having the visitation um, that come to the area for your local gas stations to the, you know, the grocery stores, retail, the small businesses, everything. Um, so we're very happy to be able to provide a little bit of benefit to Chesterfield by being here. And for some updates for this year, um, the big news is that the pool is open. Uh, we, were, we were able to open it this year um, after being closed for two years because of the pandemic. And we were able to put some, some pretty significant capital improvements into the, co into the complex over the last year or so. Um, we replaced all the, the plaster and the white coat in the pools themselves, the, the underwater surface of the pools, um, as well as the activity structure that you see in the picture that was completely refurbished, um, taken apart, sent back to the, the company and refurbished. And we're able, able to open it again this year. Um, great to see some improvements and it's also good reinvestment, you know, again, making some improvements for the people who, the loyal folks who come and use the park year after year. Um, and through, uh, last week when I pulled these numbers, we've already had about 17,000 swimmers. So that's from the Saturday Memorial Day through the 22nd. Um, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. We weren't really sure what to expect this year, being closed two years. Um, it was kind of either a boom or bust is what we were expecting. And uh, so far, it's been pretty busy. It's been a good summer already. But we still got several weeks left. Um, a couple neat events that we had this year. Um, we had Governor Yunkin out for Earth Day uh, back in April. Um, uh, Governor and First Lady Suzanne Yunkin came out and, um, and spent the morning here at the park uh, for Earth Day. And we're actually able to uh, spend a little bit of time with an elementary school class from Patrick Copeland Elementary in Hopewell. Um, so just a nice opportunity to, to get the governor and first lady out and um, 
kind of share the park a little bit, uh, have a chance to talk about the park and, and some of our some of our challenges and successes. And uh, it's been very supportive. Uh, administration has been very supportive for the department and state park so far. So it was very nice to have him out. Um, this one, really excited about this. This is just last week. We um, unveiled a brand new historical marker on Beach Road for Group Camp 7. Um, we had, uh, we had again, some, some, some VIPs, um, visitors that day. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sear was here, as well as Secretary of the Commonwealth, Kay James, and Secretary of Natural and Historic Resources, Travis Voiles. Um, so Group Camp 7, if you're unfamiliar with the story, is a historically segregated group camp in Pocahontas on the south end of the park. Um, we have several group camps that are still left that we still use, and these are all built by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the late 30s. Um, so Group Camp 7 was a segregated park that was active in the 40s and the 50s. Um, Girl Scout groups, YMCA, church groups, um, had a lot, of, a lot of really good use back then um, for your, kind of your typical summer camp, what, what you would expect. Um, so there were cabins, there was a small lodge, there was camping areas, a lake, um, hiking trails, and, and kind of assorted activities that they could take part in. Um, as a lot of things over time, we kind of lost the camp and the structures and some of the history. And over the last four or five years, um, our staff here at the park has, has really done a tremendous job doing some research and reading into Group Camp 7 and Camp Carey, as, uh, as one of the names was. And he actually talking to some folks who, who were there as children and, and campers. And um, Secretary James, when she was there last week, she said that she had been to the camp when she was a, a younger girl. So kind of need to tie that history back in. Um, working through the Department of Historic Resources, um, we were able to secure the marker and have it installed and had a, a very nice dedication last week. And um, we're proud to be able to, for perpetuity, um, honor the history and the significance of, of Group Camp 7. And we hope to continue learning more about the camp and, and we've done some guided hikes and some different programs to it. We, we hope to keep doing that and do some more. Um, and then about, I guess, two weekends ago on the 19th, we had our second annual Juneteenth celebration, community celebration in the park. Um, we had some small business vendors, some storytelling, uh, DJs, food and beverage. Um, again, really good community support. Uh, Friends of Pocahontas helped us out quite a bit. And um, just a real nice event. Uh, we did that down in the visitor center area. I wish I had a better picture of that, but that's, that's the only one I could find. <laughs> um, our concert series, uh, we've had one concert so far, Richmond Symphony. Um, we've partnered with Chesterfield Parks and Rec to, to have the symphony out over the last several years. Uh, I have another band on this Friday, the Embers. And then uh, you see we've got a full schedule of, of concerts there. Um, had a real good turnout for the uh, for the Richmond Symphony. It's probably about six, seven hundred people. We think uh, beautiful night and a, and a good turnout. So um, excited to keep the concert series going this year. Uh, trails um, trails are one of the biggest used facilities that we have at Pocahontas. We've got about 100 miles of trail total, which includes um, hiking or hiking specific trails, mountain biking specific trails, um, equestrian trails, multi-purpose trails, multi-use trails. And, um, and again, I keep going back to the community support and the volunteer support. So we opened a new mountain bike trail um, a few weeks back for uh, National Trails Day, actually was on, on June 4th, a new mountain bike trail, four miles, that was built almost entirely by volunteer support. Um, and we have, uh, you know, park staff, of course, also, but primarily volunteer support. Um, Friends of Pocahontas, RVA Moore, some of the local cycling um, stores and, and groups came out quite a bit. So just another tremendous, tremendous example of what the community, the folks who use the trails, is able to do to give back to the park and, and the rest of the riding community. Um, so we're really excited to open that up. And then we've also opened up a, a new small hiking trail or shorter hiker tra hiking trail over by the cabin area. And we've got plans to open up um, some more trails around the cabin area here in the near future. You have a quick question? Sure, Mr. Kerr. <clears throat> For people watching, where is the new um, four-mile mountain bike trail? So it's off of Hawkins Forest Road, um, which is one of our fire roads that runs from Newbies Bridge area down towards, towards the lake, kind of south that way. Um, and you can access it. Folks that are familiar with the, with the trails in the park, um, you can go down kind of through Loop Forest and our hub area and go back up through Hawkins Forest. So does the one from Courthouse Road tie into that as well? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so the hiking trails at the cabins, uh, of course, we're, we're looking to develop some more of those. Um, Pocago bike race, we had that on June 18th. We've had several bike races already this year. Just wanted to mention Pocago because it's, uh, again, the Friends of Pocahontas support that race. 
and um, all the fundraising that they get through the race goes back to the park to help continue to, to develop and maintain our hiking trail or mountain bike, mountain bike trails. Um, and the last one I put on here, this is really more of a department update than specifically a Pocahontas, but it's, it's something that we're kind of proud of. Um, our department has been uh, accredited through the Virginia Law Enforcement Professional Standards Commission since 2012. And uh, just a few weeks ago, we, we received our, I guess, our third reaccreditation. Um, we've got several, we've got about 100 officers across the state when we're fully staffed. That fluctuates a little bit, of course, so spread over those 40-some parks, 41 parks. And um, several of us are work, work on the assessment team that helps with the, uh, the annual assessment and the four-year assessment. So um, something we're a little proud of. Just shows the professionalism of, of the officers and the staff that we have at Virginia State Parks. So just wanted to throw that one in there also. And I believe that is all I have. Um, happy to take any questions. And again, I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Board members. Um, I saw how many, I, it was almost a million that uh, um, you recorded attending the park, but I know that a lot of those bike trails are remote entrances. How do you capture the number of people that actually attend the park each year, and do you think you might be understating that a little? I can answer the first question. I'm not sure I have a good answer for the second question. Um, we use traffic counters across the uh, the park entrance and the major um, parking lots, uh, the, the perimeter parking lots, we call them, like outside on Courthouse Road. So the new parking lot at Loop 4, so we built last year, expanded last year, it does have a traffic counter. And I wish I'd pulled those numbers before I came in, but I didn't. Um, we've got standard multipliers based on those counter numbers that the department uses, and it varies a little bit by time of year also. Um, so... We may be missing some, but we've used the same standard formula for year after year. So showing trends, we're pretty confident in that. Um, whether it's going to be 100% accurate, it's a good question. But I appreciate it. That's a, that's a reasonable answer. I was just curious, <laughs> knowing that there are so many different entrances mm -hmm. where they don't check in, right. I was curious how you actually achieved your... Something else that the Friends Group does, Friends of Pocahontas, that, again, I didn't pull these numbers before I came in, but they have actually purchased and maintained trail counters on the trails. So it'll physically count every biker as they go by. So we can get a pretty good accurate number count for the actual trail use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clark, I, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Clark, I just want to thank you for your service to the park. I was just out there, too, for the Juneteenth good. celebration. Good. So I applaud that. You know, the parks are so very important to our citizenry because it's a place they can go and, mm -hmm. and, and get away, as you point out. And we have needed that for the last two years. Uh, now, so now we have the opportunity to get out and with family and friends. It makes such a big difference. So thank you for your team and the service you provide to Pocahontas and for the Chesterfield County citizens. Thanks, thank sir. I appreciate that. Dr. Casey. Uh, Superintendent Clark, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, say, if you saw the prior presentation of what our communications and media mm -hmm. can do, um, you know, that's one of my bucket list things too. Whatever you need from us to better promote your parks and support them and, and get that advertising out because it is, a, it is a hidden gem. Actually, my wife and I, when we have out-of-town guests, we've actually come and stayed at the cabins and Good. there's a win-win in many regards <laughs> for that when you have out-of-town guests. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's a very reasonable price and, and those cabins are, are beautiful and, nice. and the trails are beautiful. So uh, kudos to you. But again, I just want to offer, and Susan Pollard's in the back corner, I see, so feel free to touch base with her because we, we can help you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Clark, it looks like you've got a, a good case working here for an increase in your operational budget based on the revenue numbers, I was going to say. You know, I don't know if anybody's listening to this. Uh, but maybe we can help you. But um, thanks so much for this update. Everybody um, I know who's visited is just blown away by Pocahontas, and you all just keep making it better. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you all. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.